Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning into My Classic Car, home with a certified car nut. Well, this week I'm in Silmar, California, visiting the Nethercut Collection. This collection is known worldwide as being one of the finest there is. But let me tell you, the facility that houses it and its associated restoration shop are every bit as amazing as the collection itself. Joining me now is Mike Regalia, president of the Nethercut Collection, to give us some background and tell us how this all got Hi, started. Dennis. Welcome to the Nethercut oh, Collection. Oh man, am I glad to be here. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you here. Well, this all started in about 1956 with Mr. J.B. Nethercut and his wife Dorothy, uh, co-founders of Merle Norman Cosmetics, and J.B. and Dorothy loved cars uh, when they were kids growing up. and. Uh, JB, when he started to become uh, affluent enough to be able to afford some of the cars that he saw on the roads in the 20s and the 30s as a kid growing up, he decided he wanted to start collecting cars. So in 1956, his first uh, car that he acquired was a 1936 SJN Duesenberg oh, supercharged. Nice, nice way to start out. Nice way to start. But on the way home from purchasing that car, which was going to be delivered in about three weeks' time, he came across a 1930 DuPont town car sitting mm -hmm. in the back of a gas station that was in uh, need of a restoration. So JB, uh, not knowing too much about restoration at that particular time, bought the car and took it back home and thought he would get it done in the three weeks time while he was waiting for the Duesenberg. <laughs> oh, a novice. <laughs> yeah. 18 months later and some $65,000 later, the DuPont was finished. And, and you're not sending these out to be restored, like, no. like you say, here at the shop. These cars are restored in this shop. The building that we're standing in was built by people that belong, uh, that work for Mr. Nethercut. Now, this is a, a, a fabulous facility here, but right across the street is the Nethercut Museum. The Nethercut Museum was uh, dedicated in the year 2000. It is 60,000 square feet incorporating a, a showroom floor, an archive, and uh, a, a library. Uh, open to the public. Open to the public, free of charge. People can access our library and our archives if they have information that they'd like to find out about a car that they may be restoring for themselves that is available to the public. But this room we're standing in is, is beyond belief. This is what we call the Grand Salon. Uh, for, grand it is. For <laughs> obvious reasons, and it was fashion. Mr. Nethercutt wanted to fashion the Grand Salons that you would have found in a showroom for Packard or Cadillac or Duesenberg, and he wanted a showroom that you would have found in New York City, Chicago, San Francisco, Los Angeles. Some so of he big recreated this. This is purpose-built. This, this isn't a restoration. This, this is not a restoration. This building was built with the purpose of housing the cars. Unbelievable, and it is it's just... Fabulous, and I cannot wait any longer. Let's get around this grand salon and look at some of these grand automobiles. Let's see. Mike Regalia and I started our tour with what else but the grand salon. There were so many cars, each one Concord quality, like the car that launched the collection, JB Nethercut's 36 Duesenberg. Ooh, doozies. <laughs> Yeah, we have a spectacular pair of Duesenbergs here, a 1936 SJN, which was JB's first car that he ever collected. He bought it in Glendale, California from Marshall Murkies, who was a pretty famous Oh, this Duesenberg. is the first one. This is the one that started it. This is eh? the very first car that oh. started the whole thing. Mr. Nethercutt then did sell this car with a group of cars in, 19, in the late 60s, I think around 68 or 69, to Mr. Hara. He bought this car and it remained in the Harris collection until about 1984, 85. When it came back. When it came back to the collection. So and, this is uh, what started it all. This is what started it all, and you can see why. It's a what pretty a great start. Something that's a standout, if you ask me, is the Maybach. The Maybach's a pretty spectacular car. Yes, it is. It's a 1932 Maybach Zeppelin DS8. It's an 8-liter V12. 8-liter eight V12. 8-liter V12. And it's called the Zeppelin? It's called a Zeppelin because Maybach had built the engines for the uh, Zeppelin airships for, for uh, the Germans, and uh, it was the same motor that powered it, so they nicknamed the 8-liter 12-cylinder cars That's the Zeppelins. Zeppelin. Can, so. can you open it up? Can you open sure, this one you up? Bet. I mean, they couldn't have made many of these. No, in about a 10-year span, they made about 200 cars, of which there's only about a half, and half a dozen uh, eight liters left. <sighs> That's beautiful. Look at that insignia. That really grabs you, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, a spectacular car. 200 horsepower, gobs of torque, ultra smooth. The Maybach really was the Rolls-Royce of German cars, if you will, in its early days. Stunning finish on those valve covers. The fit and finish on the cars were, was pretty, pretty high caliber. And you've brought it back uh, 
appropriately. It yes, we did. Uh, we showed this car in 1995 at the Pebble Beach Concord where it took first in class. It also qualified to win best of show, but due to a fail pump, uh, fuel pump failure, it was disqualified oh. and we were not able to drive it over the ramp, which is the stipulation Absolutely. at Pebble Beach. So we were disqualified from winning best of show. Oh, so man. it technically uh, was a best of yeah, It was can a heartbreaker. Oh, absolutely. Go right ahead. And beautiful interior too. All leather and, and uh, burled walnut interior, uh, full array of gauges, um, unique transmission in this car. It has eight forward speeds, a high and a low with a four speed pattern. But the unique thing about this car is the fact that it's uh, pneumatically shifted. It has little levers on the column that you shift on, under acceleration you shift to the next higher gear, you let off of the gas, the vacuum raises in the engine, and it moves arms that shifts the transmission no for you. No clutch. Ooh. The only time you use the clutch is on a stopping or initial startup. Unbelievable. And to downshift, you just go in the, in the direct uh, opposite pattern. Well, fabulous group of cars. And you know, if I, if I had to pick one to drive, it would, it would in fact be this one. Well, this will be the one you will drive. Then. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. <laughs> Welcome back to My Classic Car. The cars in the Grand Salon are stunning, but it's Nethercut's restoration shop that makes them look that way. This shelf is uh, the first mechanics area, and this is a, this is a gearbox for a 1930 Ruxton sedan that we're doing for the 2006 Pebble Beach Concours, and the gears are completely wore out on it. Uh, unfortunately, the, the uh, radiator sits on top of the transmission, and the lid for the transmission is right underneath the radiator, so, so if there's any seepage of water, it finds its way down in the transmission. And and it gets pitted and rusted. So. so this is one you're, you're creating? What we do is we have a machine shop here in-house that we machine a lot of our own parts. We're machining the gear blanks for the, for the gear cutter to cut the gear. So this is the new blank, this is the old part, and we're going to re reproduce this part. So we've now given the, uh, the cutter a blank to start from. Now, what are these pieces? These are gearbox pieces out of our 1937 Taubo Lago T150SS that we're doing for Pebble Beach 2005. It's a planetary gear, it's Wilson pre-select planetary gear transmission, very, very oh, unique yeah. design. Uh, the workmanship is phenomenal on the car. It's in really, really good shape. Basically, all we're doing is taking it apart, cleaning it up, and uh, we'll, we'll put it back together. Well, she got some kind of vintage equipment here with the uh, vintage cars. Well, this is what we call a New England butt braider, and we use it to braid all our wiring harnesses. Roger here has uh, been with Mr. Nethercut for over 30 years, oh, and, and, he, and he, run, <laughs> hey, he runs our electrical department for us, and, and Roger's uh, pretty adept at using this well, how machine. Does, so how does a New England butt braider work, Roger? Well, we'll show you. And was that what this thing was designed to do? Well, originally it was designed to uh, do shoelaces in about 1895, and then uh, after the turn of the century, they uh, adapted it to other uses, and we use it strictly for wiring harnesses. So here's how it works. And then if you want, you can pull a wire out and continue to braid. <laughs> then when you want to pull the whole assembly out, just braid a pigtail and Holy cow. Now, is this, I mean, is this a new machine or is this? This one was manufactured about 1940, but it's the same design as the 1895 <laughs> machine and they make them larger, smaller, and different sizes. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Every detail of these automobiles has gone over with a fine tooth comb, even down to the last stitch and hog ring in the upholstery. There was some incredible work going on here, but then Mike took me over to the metal shop. Well, that's nice. Well, this is the 2005 Pebble Beach show car. It's a 1937 Tabo Lago T150SS teardrop coupe. Ten months or so from now. Ten months or so from now, correct. But these guys are pretty good. They know what to do. So right now, this is all the original sheet metal work on the car. It's being all fitted and uh, 
new sections being made. The front nose sections of the fenders were damaged and had to be replaced. They're fitting the, the skirts. This is the only uh, one of the teardrops that originally came with skirted fenders. A lot of metal going on in here. Yes, this, Heavy is metal. The, this is the main metal shop. On my right, we have the roof section to the 37 Talbo Lago. It's all metal finished now. Chris is getting ready to attach that back to the, to the substructure. I could watch these guys all day, but there was a 32 Maybach calling me. Is it running? It's running. <laughs> I can hardly hear it. We started restoration about two and a half years before we completed it. A normal Pebble Beach quality restoration, frame up restoration, takes us anywhere from 18 months to 30 months, depending on the car and the detail work involved in it. We've done a lot of different types of cars, as you know, over, over our years of restoration work, and it's the only type of car that we know that's had this uh, vacuum operated shifting mechanism. Pretty amazing for 1932. 1932. So all those fancy Formula One cars with their paddle shifters <laughs> and all that, they've got nothing on my buck. Just like that, we're in fourth gear now. As promised, Mike turned the wheel of the Maybach over to me. And believe me, I'd been looking forward to this all day. You know, I'm gonna like this. Mike, this is beautiful. And it really, I mean, this was the, the sports car of its day, sport touring of its day, wasn't it? Yeah, it sure was. I mean, all of the all the big cylinder cars and the sporty custom coach built cars, they really were the sports cars of their day. These cars were meant to be driven, they were built to be driven, and, and we, we build them as show cars first, we show them at the various car shows around the country, and then we drive the cars. That's what they were meant for. You know, I'm, I'm really getting comfortable with this. I mean, this, oh, thing, yeah. you know, this thing is a very comfortable car to drive. Sure. Even the antique cars in the collection is as big and daunting as they are. Once you get used to them and you get used to the idiosyncrasies of the car and you, be acclimate, you become acclimated to them, you find that, you know, they're not as uh, intimidating as yeah. they seem. A beautiful car, Mike. Just unbelievable. Not bad for 1932, Not huh? bad at all. And the work you guys do is phenomenal. Well, thank you very much. We think, uh, we think we do some pretty good work here, and we have plenty of other projects in the shop I'd like you to see, so why don't you come on with me, and we'll go take a look what's inside. There's no collection like the Nethercut okay. collection, man. <laughs> this has been a phenomenal day. I'm telling you, the Nethercut collection is absolutely an automotive treasure. It's open to the public. It's free. If you're in Silmar, California, it's must see. Want to learn more about them? Check them out on the web at nethercutcollection.org.